Welcome to the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Detol Banega Swast India at Jan Machalski Foundation, Bethak. The festival brochure and flyer with details of the full program are available for purchase at the information desk. We are delighted to introduce Shringar and the Dance of God. This session is presented by Red FM. The vast history and many interpretations of Shringar, from ancient tradition and theatrical presentations to modern dance dramas, are immeasurable. Shringar is an aesthetic peak, believed to be the mother of all nine ras in Indian dance. A Morris love serves a simple definition, but it embodies the most intimate, universal, and diverse aspects of the romantic union passion, desire, fear, separation, and even sickness. Performing arts legends Sohini Roy Chaudhary, an exponent of Bharatanatyam, and Sharon Lam, one of Orissi, Mayur Bhanj, and Manipuri dance join Manjiri Sinha for a fascinating conversation about the evocative and evolutionary form. I request Manjiri Sinha to take over the session. Thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction. Okay. Looking at the colorful and vibrant ambience here all over, you must be feeling, I think, the same. Experiencing the vibrancy of the whole ambience of this literature festival, I remember Kalidas in Ritu Sanghar talking about Vasanta. Druma sapushpa salilam sapadmam striya sakama pavanu sugandhi sukha pradosha sarvam priye charutaram vasante. The vernal trees are full of flowers, waters filled with lotuses, breezes loaded with fragrances blowing agreeably, augmenting the desires of sensuous women. Both the evenings and the daytimes are pleasant. Oh dear. Everything is extremely pleasing in Vasanta, the season of spring. There couldn't have been better time to explore Rasaraj Shringar than in the time of Rituraj Vasant. I am Shringar. It is actually the fountainhead of all Rasas. From time immemorial, our scholars, treaties, academicians have talked about Rasa Siddhant. What is Shangar Ras? Ordinarily, it is just a love between a man and a woman. But when it comes to our arts and poetics, it becomes the Shangar Ras. Every art in our culture has got something to do with the Rasanishpati. That gives the high to the spectators of art who see or who interact with us. The relish of the aesthetic bliss, the aesthetic delight. And they are all in ourselves. We all know, we all know what love is. But it comes to Sringaras, Bharata has said in his Nadi Shastra that there are, he has said eight, but now we can understand nine rasas, which are associated with the feelings. Let me tell the Sringar, which is, of course, erotic. Hasya, comic, Karuna, pathetic, Rudra, fury, veer, heroic, Bhayanak, fearful, Vibhats, odious, Adbhut, marvelous, and Chant, peaceful. So, 
when we come to Tungar, and I don't think they could have made a better books than Shringar and classical dances, and dancing with the gods, and the two divas I'm blessed to converse with, with beauty and brains, Sharon and Sohini. So, so coming to both of you one by one, first of all, I would like to go on what's your take on the topic itself, Shringar, the dance of the god, Sharon. There are obviously many, many levels and many ways of approaching it. Obviously, Shringar, on a very fundamental, mundane level, is man-woman love. It also, of course, means bright and beautiful and Ujvala Rasa. But when we're talking about Shringar, there's also Dharma Shringar, Artha Shringar, and what we're most familiar with is Kama Shringar, which has inspired so many uh, poets and artists. But when we're talking about classical dance, what we are generally referring to is the moksha shringara, which is the spiritual aspect. When we talk about, uh, you know, that the classical dances are coming from a spiritual consciousness, this doesn't mean that the dance you see on the stage today is necessarily spiritual, because it can be simply entertaining. It's no longer in the temple. It's come to the stage, and you have many options. But the ultimate that we wish to communicate through the classical dance forms, which are all neoclassical, is to evoke the rasa, to evoke a metaphysical experience. And how do we do that? You have to start with mundane. You have to start with human love. Now, we all know that um, most Western traditions, for various reasons, have separated the, um, the spiritual from the mundane. Unless you have like the ecstasy of Teresa or in the Bible, the Song of Solomon, you don't have that much of the erotic or the sensual expression. But here, it's been a part of Indian aesthetics that the idea of taking what we understand on a human level of love and trying then to extrapolate that to the non-duality, the unselfish love that will actually give you a metaphysical uh, non-dual experience. And obviously we all start with the, um, the forms and ultimately, we want the nirguna, the formless. So um, we have, uh, for instance, it's, it's very common for young students of dance to say, this is so retrograde. Why all this pining? Because when we have, yes, love and separation, love and union. The union is very brief. The separation is long. But when we have the nayakas, you have their various states, their preparation, their going to meet the beloved, uh, the waiting, the pining, uh, the disappointment, the, the, you know, the, the um, uh, eight stages. You also have the different kinds of heroines, from the, the mugda, the, the unsmelt flower, to experienced, and in a way more significantly, is that you have what we generally try to show is the Uttamanayaka, the very refined rather than the ordinary one. The easiest example is that, for instance, in uh, Yahi Madhava from Git Govinda, uh, when Krishna shows up in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, with all of the signs of having uh, made love passionately, because there's scratches and everything, uh, to another. If it was a uh, Adama, well, an Adama Nayaka, she would immediately, if she was home, get out the frying pan and beat him. Or uh, the uh, uh, Madhyama, you know, would shout and scream. But what does Radha, who's an Uttama Nayaka, do? She looks at him and she sees these signs and she thinks, 
Acha, this is what it is. This is what you've been doing. This is who you are. You who are divine and inside you're very dirty. Now, the reason all of this long arc, going through all of the lovely prema rasa and the ras lila and all of that, in the Gita Govinda, the reason that he has come to her like this, and he makes excuses because he doesn't want to hurt her, because she's almost perfect, but for all of us, no matter how much we try and control our negativities, the ego is the last to go. She must give up her ego to have the pure Sringar Bhakti, to understand that he cannot belong to her alone. He totally belongs to her, but he totally belongs to everyone else. That's when you finally have the union. And the union is also a metaphor for um, uh, uh, Parush and Prakriti, for Jivatmam and Paramatma. Um, and, but again, there's many levels. And then we talk about Devadasis. The Devadasis were both dancing in the courts for the kings, which is Kama, and we also have them dancing in the temples. There were some absolutely dedicated only to the spiritual. And just like we ourselves can switch between, you know, mundane and ultimate. So, but the Madhura Bhakti, there's also, of course, Vatsalya, love of child, Saka, friends. Yes, but you have to, uh, but the Madhura Bhakti, the love as uh, uh, for the, uh, for the divine, uh, through this uh, uh, Sringar Bhakti, is something that's very special. And then, of course, what, what she's focused on is the overarching fact that we are talking about the divine, all of it. And this is, in a way, a subset. Go on. Thank you. Uh, she was so overtaken by the divine aspect. I really appreciate her feelings, which are coming out very warmly. So now coming to you, Sohini, just your idea, your take on the Shingar and the dance of God. Thank you. Very happy to be on stage with both of you, institutions. <laughs> so this is something I'm going to proudly tell my grandchildren also, that I've been on stage with both of you and very happy to be with all of you here. Happy for your time and empathy. Shringar to me is the love rasa. And as Tagore has said, that love is all there is. It's the only reality. And it's not a mere sentiment. It lies at the heart of all creation. And Shringar for me, on stage, in life, in divinity, and in human life, it's all about love. It's how in Kumar Sambhava, Kalidasa, describes Shiva and Parvati making torrential love when Kartika is conceived. It could be Shakuntala waiting for Dushyant, pining for him. Radha pining for Krishna, which is divine love, again a metaphor for the individual to connect with the divine. It could actually be Faust. It could be Prometheus Unbound. It could be Frankenstein. And it could be Othello and Desdemona too. So love in all its shades, in complete honesty, in romantic love, in spiritual love, connecting hearts, lust, languor, and its brutality. That's Sringar for me, Ardha Narishwar, when Shiva and Parvati combine to form one whole, being totally in love, and Shiva as one of the greatest feminists, because there was no ego there. Similarly, you have Hermes and Aphrodite combining to form one whole. That combination of equal man and woman, for me, is Sringar. Sringar also could be as defined by the Kola Hall Theatre Workshop, where Bhanumati is a transgender, and, uh, she, and he is playing the woman protagonist in all theatres, falls in love with Master, the hero of it all. 
and that uninhibited love and the brutality that it meets, but purity of love, even between the LGBTQIA community or the transgender community, for me, that's Shringar. The Shringar is what we feel when today we pray that Russia and Ukraine stop the war and humanity is saved. We'll probably never go to Ukraine. Maybe I'll never meet an Ukrainian person in my life. I don't know. But all of us are in this silent prayer that the war should stop and humanity should sustain that concern, that large wave of love which overwhelms all of us and humanity as a whole, for me, is Shringar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Looking at the title of your book, Dancing with the Gods, this brought this question to my mind. Being a Bharatanatyam dancer, was it uh, the Padams and Varnams of the um, Dev Devadasis? Earlier, you can go in Sadar, even the Padams of the, uh, Varnams of Devadasis, pining and yearning for gods, uh, something for Lord Shiva or Lord Krishna or Vishnu or anybody. Is that the concept that brought to you with this book, Dancing with the Gods? Yes, I love your question because it makes me think also harder. Uh, dancing with the gods, yes, with the Devdasis, they were devotees of the gods. They were dancers of the gods till the Western, uh, some Western historians and the patriarchy distorted their role in the evolution of Bharatanatyam. And around 1952, where you have Dasiatyam, as it was called, given a more respectable uniform and called Bharatnatyam, and the Devdasis were marginalized, mm -hmm. sent off to the outskirts, and their art was snatched away and given to middle class, so-called respectable women who were educated to carry on. So that, for me, is a movement of patriarchy, the colonists, and political movement. So that is dancing of the gods for me, which was the culture, the art of the Devdasis, mm -hmm. which then moved on to the stage. But for me, the spirituality, the divinity stays intact. Thank you very much. Bharata has very rightly and very authentically codified the way, the process of Rasnishpati saying vibhava nubhav vyavichari sanyogat rash nishpatti taking sharan's book i'll read out the translation vibhav comprises the uddipana the determinants and alamban the reliance anubhav the response of the alamban or expression of love by nayak and naika Vyabhichari are bhavas, are transient emotions. All these heighten the basic sthai bhava, permanent emotion, and the ras is invoked. The ras is invoked not only the dancer or the person who is emoting it, but also to all of you, the rasikas. So Sharon, looking at your book, the question comes to my mind, how could you what has been your journey with this book? Inviting so many people to talk about their own dance and styles and Shringar, how it has been dealt there. Tell me how you went about it. You mean, you mean the journey for this particular yes, book? Yes, yes, yes. Let me show them such a beautiful- Actually, uh, let, me, the, let me have you show the slides. Okay. Uh, I do have some slides I had prepared of the book. You can have, a, Whole glimpse of Just the book. Just to give a quick glimpse this, of the book. Uh, PowerPoint so position. Here's, here's the title: Shringar in Classical Indian Dance. Yes. Because obviously this is a pan-India subject. It's something that um, uh, you know. After independence, we talked about national integration, unity, and diversity, and this is certainly an example of that. Um, so here, as as Mandri Sinha had said, these are your basic rasas, but Sringar is considered the king of them all, and it also can include all of them. And this is not only obviously in dance, but it's the core of all of the aesthetics. Um, 
And, you know, this is something that is quite unique to classical Indian dance, that we have the opportunity, because the dancer is also an actor, and we are interpreting text, and that way we can bring out this unselfish, unconditional spiritual love through these metaphors of the poetry. In Bharatanatyam, her style, the seeds come from the Sangam literature, which was before there was actually the dance tradition. And of course, in, in Orissa, uh, as we know in medieval times, the Bhakti movement, um, when the poet Jayadev wrote the Git Govinda, these were the only songs allowed to be performed in the temple. So these are the, art, the writers and scholars who had written in my book about their styles. Uh, Kamalini Dutt, of course, is the person responsible for creating as well as saving 50 years of Durdarshan AV. Uh, Anuradha uh, Janalagada was actually my student when I helped set up the Central University Sarojini Naidu School of Visual and Performing Arts. Now she's the dean of the school. Uh, Anweshwa Mahanta is brilliant about um, uh, Satria. And Anupama Kailash is an exponent of Vilasani Natyam, which previously was called Andhra Natyam. It's the Devadasi tradition from Andhra Pradesh. Then Bharti Shivaji wrote on Mohini Atyam. I've, of course, covered the Odissi. And Shovana Narayan is a very prolific scholar and artist, and she's written about Kathak. So um, everyone who has written about it is a practitioner, as well as someone who's gone into the foundation and the background of it. So you can get really <coughs> where is the emphasis and how it's developed. Um, um, I was very happy that Lakshmi uh, Vishwanath was kind enough to write an overarching introduction to give us the context of the Sringara, cover kind of the basic theoretical things that you'll find in Natyashastra, so that when we talked about our individual styles, we didn't have to do that. Um, and nobody better than Kamalini Dutt to uh, talk about Bharatanatyam. Kuchipudi was, uh, as I said, was Anuradha. And she talks about how it, because it was done by men, and like other forms, it came from dance drama, where solo items were plucked out, and there was more natya in it, the way it was developed, and also more erotic, because it was typically done by men. And then Vilasini Natyam, uh, is the name given by the uh, incredible research that Swapna Sundari did uh, based on the foundation that was there, Kala Krishnan, and uh, with help, uh, Professor Natarajan, and also uh, Devadasis. And she's a brilliant scholar and has really also had the form performed in the temple again, uh, which it hadn't been done. Um, probably since the British outlawed the Devadasi tradition. And so she's done uh, yeoman's work for that. Vilasani, if you haven't seen it, it's, it's kind of a more lyrical version. You can just imagine, if you know your cultural geography, between Orissa, Andhra, to Tamil Nadu. And then um, the dance of the enchantress obviously has a lot of Sringar, done by, um, by uh, Bharati. And then the uh, Bhakti Sringar in the Satya dance tradition, one of the recent additions to the pantheon. You know, at the time of independence, there was only four styles recognized as classical. Manipuri, because it was known because he, uh, of Tagore, who had brought uh, Manipur dance tradition to Bengal. Uh, and then uh, the other forms, Kathak, Bhartanatyam, and Kathakali. Uh, here you've got Sitara Devi, Saswati Sen, and Maharaji, who's just yes. left us. There are lovely pictures I can see. So, the, uh, friends, we see how she approached uh, the practitioners of different dance styles and how Shringar dealt in Indian classical dance styles as such. This is a detailed, about, uh, uh, detailed research 
about the Shringar Paksh, Shringar Ras, in all the dance. But if you've got no time and you want to know everything about dance, particularly Bharatanatyam, go for this. It's a beautiful book, lovely pictures, small, small bits about every dance style, about the dance itself, how Ras is produced. Yato drishtis tato hasta, yato hastas tato mana, yato manas tato bhava, yato bhavas tata rata. Jaha hath ho, haha drishti jaye, jaha drishti ho, vaha man jaye, jaha man hoga, vaha to bhao hoga hi, or jaha bhao hoga, vaha ras hoga. To ras ka nishpadan, kitna sundar, kitna saral, or saaf sutre shabdo me char akshano me agar aapko padnao, char pankyo me padnao, to go for this book. So, uh, so when he come to you, looking at this beautiful pictorial pic book of yours, question comes to my mind that, do you think that uh, the graceful body movements also have to play some role in expressing Bhushangar? And another question, I'll go, so thus you can throw light on both of them. The second question is, uh, friends, she has been living 12 uh, full years in Madrid. Then in Berlin. Between Berlin and India. Between Berlin and India, she commutes six months here and there. She is half Videshi and half Deshi. So I am asking her, what about the students who are of foreign origin? How do you communicate the ethos of Shringar to them? This is my question also. The first, about is it only beautifully graceful movements that express Shringar? And if not, then how do you communicate the ethos of Shringar to the students of foreign? Yes. I'll answer both questions, Manjali yes. thank you. Uh, the first is for me, Shringar and the way we've learned it and we teach is not just movements and postures, it's how you feel inside. It's what you feel within. How your soul, if your soul dances, your body dances. Love is a matter of the soul. If it was just the body, it would be gymnastics. So as soon as you're saying dance, it's that poetry, that music which pervades the soul and then, trans, uh, then transfers to the body. And for that reason, I feel, you know, in our field and many fields, there's a lot of body shaming happening. That somebody, you say, you know, she may, you feel she's overweight, you want her to have the Barbie kind of figure, which is absolute nonsense. I have seen in Europe, somebody who's a little on the plump side might be a far better dancer to somebody who has like a zero, size figure and could be a model. So Shringar is the rasa within. It's the poetry of the soul, which is permeating into the rest of the body and then to the audience, to the rasikas, to the aura. The aura is building up and uh, catharsis is just a part of it. It's the music which is playing a very big role. Yes. Without music, it would be like an underwater movement. Here, I must tell you all that she is the daughter of Pandit Subrato Roy Chaudhary, a beautiful sitar player from Calcutta. And most of her YouTube links, you will find his sitar at the background. Zada tar nritya mein hum bhool jate hain ki sangeet ka prana tattva sangeet hai. Nritya ka prana tattva sangeet hai. Aap bina sangeet ke nritya dekhiye, to bhaav aap tak pahunchenge hi nahi. तो संगीत को बराबर का ध्यान देना देखिए हमारे यहाँ शारंग देव ने कहा था गीतम वादम तथा रित्यम त्रयम संगीतम उच्चे थे गीत वाद्य और रित्य सब मिलकर के एक संपूर्ण एंटिटी का नाम है संगीत तो रित्य बिना संगीत के संभव नहीं हो सकता now you can go ahead talk about your music and, uh, and dance, yes. for me, as she said, you know, Shringar from okay, within. Okay, okay, I'll come to you. Shiva and Parvati, when Shiva was performing his Tandav, because Sati had given up her body in the Daksha Yajna, and he was performing the Tandav in grief, in fury, in lament, and the world was about to come to an end. That is where Parvati calms him down, 
to being a lover and a dweller with the Raga Malkos. And that is the Rasa Shantam, another aspect of Sringar in its calmness, in its calm, in its beautiful avatar. So that, I think, answers your question whether it should come from within or Thank how you. else. Thank you very much. You are very articulate, I must say. Thank you. And the second question that you asked, that how do I train uh, women who are not born in India in 14 different countries to perform Bharatanatyam? Yes, I have students in 14 different countries, and many of them are stage-level Bharatanatyam dancers. But when I started off, for example, if I'm working in Russia, I would do some basic Bharatanatyam postures and movements with Tchaikovsky. In Spain, I would do it with Paco Lucia's guitar. So they have one part of what we are doing they can relate to. For example, in Bengal, being a Bengali myself, any part of the world, if I hear a Tagore song, I, I just stand in my tracks. Or Tagore poetry, we stand in our tracks. So similarly, it is important for them to stand in their tracks and take notice and relate to it. And then when one is more serious, to go into the deeper nuances of Bharatanatyam. So that is how I start off, and so far, it's been a love story. That's very nice. Beautiful, beautifully good. Sharon, there is uh, one, um, I'm worried about one thing. And nowadays, I see the Shingar as just as coupled with the dramatic Abhinay is becoming Lok Dharmi. What do you think of that? Sorry. And the second question, we all know that there are three Shabda Shakti, the strength of words, Abhida, Lakshana, and Ranjana. So the dancers are confined only to Abhida, word to word meaning and their word. Don't you think there should be uh, trial from their side to go to suggestion to Vyanjana and Lakshana. Yes. Well, you raised two very important points. Uh, Alokadharmi obviously means more um, uh, uh, pop. Uh, Lokadharmi is of the people. It means uh, more like acting. So, for instance, if one person is creating all the atmosphere and all the characters that's considered a higher aesthetic challenge than in a drama where you've got different characters and you've got settings. It might not necessarily be the case, but that's like a, an overarching thing. When a dancer is learning um, uh, a piece, first of all, it's you. I tell, my, I tell my students, and I've done a lot of workshops with this, Abhinay is very easy. There's only three things. First of all, you have to understand. You have to understand the text, the context, who is the poet, when did they live, why did they write. When we talk about the different stages of, say, the Nayaka, the heroine, there's different stages of her, there's different types, and in fact, where did I write this down? I have the notes, yes. There's like, there are classifications between the Nayaka Bed and the Astanayakas. It comes to like 384 different subcategories of the type, the situation, and their character. Now, you know, you all know the story about if you want to learn this, you have to learn that. You can't learn painting till you learn dance, till you learn sculpture, till you learn music, till you learn architecture, blah, blah, and it's a lifelong thing. So the dancer must make an effort to understand as much of the context. Too often we see a beautiful dancer on the stage and they have a very wonderful stage personality but it's definitely not an Uttamanayaka. It's not a refined character. Um, you know, you can't be like that. That's not Radha. Yes, that's now you told about that, the that's Uttamanayaka. The, that's the yes, example. Yes, yes, okay, yes, yes. So, so one thing is you have to understand. Then obviously the, another thing is that your own life development and growth right. is half your riyas. So once you understand, which is an ongoing unpeeling the onion, then you have to feel it, and then you have to let it show. You have to let it come out. Now, the other point that you made, very briefly, monodharma. I did a yes, festival. Yeah, my next question yes. was about that. Yes. The paradigm shift you're talking about 
in the expression of Shingar. So my question is here, is this a, a situation when the younger dancers don't uh, worry to, don't need to worry about the manodharma at all? The spontaneous improvisation right. is manodharma, what I'm so talking about. So manodharma, In depth yeah. exploration of particular bhava or avastha, but you all talked about yes. just now. So it's all disappearing nowadays. But That's you see, what I think. The, way, the way in Bharatanatyam it was taught was that the guru would give a line. Then you have to interpret it based on your understanding. So let's say you're doing an abhisarika. Radha is going to, out to meet Krishna. Oh, you can show going out of the house, you can show putting out the light, you can show stepping on thorns, being afraid of people. There's all these different things. Um, <clears throat> if you're in a happy mood, the moonlight is beautiful. If, it's, if you're miserable and separated, it's burning you. When you understand these things, then the dancer just is spontaneously creating. That's very different than when someone has made a choreography and you learn it. Because that was created one time and really for like one dancer. So, um, and today of course, you don't, dancers don't get the opportunity to discover the art, to share it. It's not easy to hold the stage for two and a half hours as our programs were. People are doing group, but you're losing a lot with that. This, I, I would like to ask this question to you also, Sohini. What do you think about this paradigm shift? The details of the uh, Nayaka, Nayaka Bhao, or the Avastha, or the different kind of Nayaka, Nayaka, these are all disappearing nowadays. Uh, yes, it is disappearing, but the difference, one is when you learn some part and improvise on some parts, because what we perform is part, it, it's, it's a structure, and we improvise within that structure. We cannot go out of it, like the Raga Roops. Mm -hmm. So that structure is there, and when we are talking about uh, the drama part, mm -hmm. it is what you have in the films also. One, you have the method acting, mm -hmm. and you have the spontaneous acting. So similarly, I also think that disappearing may be uh, due to lack of training. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to do something impromptu and say, oh, it's very contemporary and this is no. I think everything, the gravitas stays when you've learned and then you've chosen to do things differently. But that learning needs to be there. So maybe it's disappearing because that learning process has suffered. With internet, a lot of stuff is available to us, but a lot, uh, also, there are too many distractions. Mm. So maybe all that contributes to it, but I think if your soul dances, your body dances. If it's coming from within, yes. even without method acting, you can be fantastic. And with all your training also, you can fall short. Mm. So it, it is something that comes from the heart. Thank you, you know, very much. One thing I'd like to add is, one of the reasons that I decided to stay on living in India was the opportunity to have musicians to work with to perform with a live orchestra. So it's a partnership. Now when you have a live orchestra, that means you can have the freedom so that you can create this and you can say, um, you know, until I do this thing, keep repeating the line. But when you have recorded music, you're stuck. By talking to both of them, I understand that the ethos of Indian classical dance and Shingar in the Indian classical dance has do something with Madhurya. Right now, I was outside listening to Dr. Harsh Daheja. He said, Krishna is Ras and Rasika both. He is Smarana and Vismarana. Unki jo Basuri ki Madhurya hai, unke Sangeet ka Madhurya jab kanu mein padta hai, to bhooli hui kitni hi vaate yaad a jati hai, hume apna Smarana hu aata hai. Hamari Bharati kalai, it's a way to reach your own inner self. In that sense, I think Shringar is the most potent of all rasas. And I am fortunate to have people like this to talk to, Sohini and Sharon. You beautifully explained the Shringar, the Madhuri, the divinity inside the Shringar that we see in our arts. So I'm very grateful to both of you to uh, JLF for giving me this opportunity ha to meet and have this session together. And of course, all of you for now suffering question. us so patiently and so nicely. Thank you very much.
Now the questions, if anyone has any. Questions from the audience, please, yes. Uh, thanks for the wonderful session. Just want to ask you about the contribution of the sculpting tradition to recreation of Bharatanatyam because we all know that the tradition was discontinued in terms of Sadhir as well. And today we have, uh, for example, the prominent temple in Indonesia, Jakarta, where the Karnas are depicted along with the Tanjur Big Temple and a temple in Chitambaram. Why is it that the due credit to the sculptors has not been given as much? There's very little research. Only two people I know have researched on the credit to recreation of the dance poses, especially of the dance karanas, to the sculptors. Thank you. Yes. Could you understand the question? Yes, I think he wants to connect how we connect sculptures with Bharatanatyam, right? Is that what you asked? Are you asking about the karanas or modern sculpture or ancient? I'm sorry. I'm talking about how dance, as you recreated it, takes inspiration from a sculpting tradition. Is mm -hmm. it very different from what it is destined before the dance karanas were formally rediscovered? In, in Odissi, my, because the dances are neoclassical, right? They're all, re, most of them are reconstructed over the last couple of hundred years. So my guru, Ketucharan Mahapatra, who was a genius, and who came from a Patachitra family, so he had all of the aesthetics, he studied all of the sculptures uh, and that's why if the Gotipuris did this, but he saw the sculptures were like this, so he refined it absolutely based on the sculpture. And then obviously Padma Subramaniam has taken the, uh, uh, the Karanas and said they're not still points, they're moving points, and has recreated that. What would you add? <laughs> हम सब में वो श्रृंगार विद्यमान है लेकिन जब हम कला के माध्यम से उसको देखते हैं तो उसका एक शोध होता है एक परिष्कार होता है वो हमको अंदर से ज्यादा अच्छा इंसान बनाता है हमारे अंदर के देवत्व को उद्दीप्त करता है मैं सोच रही हूं कि आप तक पहुंच गई होगी बात धन्यवाद Somebody there. Hello. Um, you know, we once I was attending a session by B. N. Goswami, who is an expert on Krishna paintings, and we noticed there are certain motifs that have come down from the ages, even in mainstream Bollywood dance. So, if you know that song Kajirare, okay, where she's saying Meri Angrai na tu te tu aja. Not 100% that was a Shringara Rasa thing. But I want to understand in the disciplines of Odyssey, in Bharat Natyam, whether there are such, you might say, set notions or set ideas that, that you reinterpret over time. Yes. She told uh, about uh, Odyssey, now you can tell about uh, Bharat Natyam. Okay. In Bharat Natyam, see, we have a repertoire of steps, movements. For example, when you write an essay, Maybe the first five years you learn your alphabets and then you learn your phrases and your grammar and your punctuation. And that set into your mind, you can write your own essays which are creative. So similarly, Bharatanatyam also Shringar, there are certain aspects that you learn uh, where Radha is pining for Krishna and you're waiting for somebody and you're pining and that shows not only in Bharatanatyam, but as you said in Bollywood and other contemporary forms, the heroine, the Naika, is pining for the man to come soon, or is angry because he doesn't turn up, or she's complaining or lamenting. So there is a particular vocabulary. Maybe you learn maybe 100, 100 ways of expressing it. But that is your framework. Within that, you improvise. And Bollywood also is shaped a lot by classical dances and folk dances. So the Krishna uh, cult, the Ras Leela, from our folk arts, from the Madhubani paintings to Bharatanatyam, to classical arts, and to Bollywood also. You know, it just comes step by step because that is the intrinsic part of the culture. And a lot of the vocabulary for communicating these different stages of love are obviously going to be there in Bollywood and pop culture. But the difference is 
that that is at the level of entertainment, human level, man and woman, boy and girl, different kinds of characters. But when you want to evoke rasa, you have to have sattvic abhinaya, which is going to lead you to not just this physical pleasure, but to a metaphysical pleasure. But, you know, as she says, the basic components and the elements are the same. But if you've got, you know, 384 or 1,000 different combinations, um, because we all know that love is very individual and also very universal. So whether you're doing it on a mundane level or you want a metaphysical thing, most of the films are not aiming for a metaphysical level. But they're still wonderful, you know. Do we have time for another question? Yeah. Okay. Vicky Shingar or... Uh, May I read out four sentences? Is that allowed? I would like to read out from this book of mine, the preface, which I have written from the heart and which shapes my work. Uh, it's dedicated to all of you. To you with a dance in your heart, the boy branded effeminate for wanting to learn a dance. To you, the girl forced to choose physics tuitions over dance rehearsals. To you, the 70-year-old made to feel too old to swing to the beats of her soul. To you, the young adult forced to forsake dance at the altar of a serious career option. To you, the trans man stigmatized out of dance. To you, body shamed into shying away from swaying in public. May this dance be yours now and forever. श्रृंगार और कुछ नहीं है हमारे अंदर का जो माधुर्य है उसको इसके चरणों में समर्पित करना है इस आत्मा का उस अरमात परमात्मा में विवीर्ण होना ही यही हमारी कलाओं का चरम लक्ष्य है धन्यवाद थैंक यू एंड थैंक्स टू जे एल एफ एंड रेड एफ एम विच लव्स लव एंड वी ऑल लव लव